Perfetto, adesso io mi prendo la gestione. Un perfetto, ci siamo. Siamo registrati, siamo in mute e... Ascolta. Welcome everyone to this seminar for the database tools. Say we have... Okay. Uh, we have uh, Gina and I already introduced them to you and you them are going to talk about, but they are going to introduce themselves. Uh, this seminar so they will be available to have very much like the lessons that are available for 24 hours or 48 Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much for being here. And Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Uh, it's a bit awkward uh, with this uh, hybrid. Uh, yeah. Anyway. yeah. Um, so th these first slides are just uh, just for, for the sake of breaking the ice. And uh, I mean, we are researchers. Uh, at the Institute of uh, Science and Information Te uh, Technology at the at CNR uh, in Pisa, and uh, over there she is Gina, and uh, this is the overall uh, content for the, for these two days, and uh, the main intent of these uh, of, of seminars is to introduce you to what um, also your very professor here does at uh, in his is in his in not spare time, but other activities than teaching, because here in Padua there's a, a strong community in, in uh, digital libraries and open science, and uh, it would be interesting, I think, we think, for you to get introduced something that is not usually covered in, 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 uh, in the syllabus of your university uh, classes. Um, we both work, let me change, uh, and, uh, for the Open Air project, and um, which is a big, huge uh, European infrastructure for open science and open access. Um, the, the main reason, uh, or the, the main mission and objective of Open Air is to have a paradigm shift in scholarly communication moving towards open science and open access of research products and results. Uh, we have a bunch of services that we provide to the community and, um, and uh, mostly, uh, we, we develop uh, uh, what, what I'm going to, I'm gonna try to deliver uh, tomorrow is, uh, is it's uh, a lecture about the graph, which one of the services we 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 provide to the community, and it's it's a, uh, a graph of information that that's scholarly knowledge related, and um, me for yeah, no, sure. There is a problem because I see that the, the chat is having oh. no worry. Okay. Uh, Okay. That's right. Uh, and um, so, yeah, uh, we would like to know something uh, about you. Um, I know that we are not all in presence, so it's a rising hands and, and, and everything is a bit, it's a bit hard, but uh, we would like to know basically, because we are going to cover these this, this subjects, we'd like to know whether you know uh, how scientific which works, how academia is like, what are the different entities that uh, are in play? How does scholarly communication work? Uh, if, for example, if you are intend, intended to do a PhD, because at the moment, uh, it is my understanding, this is a master class, right? So not every one of you is gonna, is gonna have a, be a, a research career in the future, might think about it or might not think about it. So it would be interesting to know whether you know, like um, when I was at the university, I wasn't, and I was your age, I wasn't really aware of what what research about. Like I didn't know about paper, know what happens in conferences, and um, and I I felt the miss, like retrospectively, of a course that could explain that in time. 
And um, so I don't know, like how many of you think about having a PhD in the future? Like roughly, no one rising hand. Ornella is already there. Uh, no. No. Okay. No, no. That's okay. uh, that's perfectly fine, and it's not like um, a, a problem. Uh, if uh, like, do you know how research works? Like now that with, with COVID, for example, we have been thrown to to the face uh, lots of concepts about science, how it works. And there are, there have been buzzwords like peer review, and and papers and articles that are published somewhere. Than, and and this, I think for most of the people, were things that were unknown before. And, uh, and that these last two years they've been disclosed uh, and the scientific uh, process, uh, it, it became open for everybody, this new concept about cooperation. So I, I think, uh, do you know, do you have a grasp on, on what's behind, like, or uh, you know how science works? This is the stuff that you're going to uh, learn is first, uh, in this first lesson. Okay. And, and tomorrow we are going to, from this complexity, we are going to move uh, toward uh, scholarly data engineering and databases that are um, into uh, modeling this kind of information and what, what is possible to do uh, on top of those. So yeah, that, that was my, my, my uh, main message for, for the moment. So I'll leave the stage. Okay, to thank you. Questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Andrea for your kind introduction. So uh, okay. I my mask. Uh, today uh, we are going to talk about um, a scientific, uh, the scientific work, uh, how the research life cycle uh, works, and uh, maybe some of the main concepts that we are covering today uh, have already been introduced by your professor, but I think they are really important for you, um, not, mm, not only because, uh, uh, you know, not, not, not for only for those that want to do research, but also for you as citizens. So I think that it, it, it is really important to understand how science works and uh, how uh, we as citizens, not as students, but as citizens can contribute to science. Um, uh, we have spent uh, uh, already a few words on uh, what open air is, and it, it is one of the main projects that uh, we, uh, I work on, I contribute. Uh, and in particular, uh, for open air, I work as national open access desk. That means that I give practical advice to researchers when they have to uh, practically put in practice um, uh, open uh, access to their uh, for example, today are scientific articles and so on. And uh, if you are interested on the concept of open science that we will uh, look at closely uh, in a few minutes, um, you can have a look at the uh, website uh, openscience.it. Um, uh, well, so we are going to have a look at uh, the research life cycle, uh, the open science, uh, RDM as it is intended uh, for uh, research, but I think that they can uh, be useful uh, concept, concept in everyday life uh, also for students, uh, even if they are really simple concepts for you that are uh, uh, studying um, uh, um, computer engineers. So uh, I think they are basic concepts, but uh, I think that having a strategy also on that is useful for everybody. Okay, and we have uh, we will have a look at what fair principles are. Um, uh, which are one main um, um, components that can enable uh, open science. Uh, so, first of all, let's start uh, from the importance of science for today's uh, society. So, we live in a society uh, uh, where uh, we are surrounded by science and we are um, uh, we can uh, we have a lot of results uh, and we, uh, of course, um, our uh, live which, which are uh, determined also by result obtained, obtained by uh, scientists in the past. And uh, so I think that it is uh, important for us to know 
what are the main components of a, a research life cycle. Uh, here they are represented uh, the, the very uh, basic ones and uh, we go to uh, the preliminary stage where scientists have an idea and hypothesis and then um, have to, uh, they need uh, resources to uh, just uh, perform their research so they have to look for funding. Of course they have to look at what others before them have produced. So uh, they have to review uh, the literature and uh, they have to write a proposal because funding, obtaining funding is uh, um, important in order to uh, perform the research. Then the, there is the actual um, research uh, stage uh, with the, the experiment, uh, observation and collection of data, data analysis, and uh, um, possibly uh, sharing um, data with others. Uh, so allowing others to use our uh, data and results to, for example, uh, ask other res research questions or to um, perform other um, experiments, researches, and so on. Uh, an important part of the uh, scientific work is to write articles and to uh, have them published uh, on scientific journals. Uh, writing the articles means to uh, check what our under ask us, so the mandate that we are um, demanded from the funder, so the uh, institution that gives us uh, money, and then uh, it is important to have um, uh, peer review, and we will uh, have a closer look later uh, to what peer review is, and then this nation. Uh, um, and at the end, there are a set of actions that we can perform in order to enable um, long time observation of our results and uh, also uh, access and possibly reuse of our results. Uh, but I think that here, what is important to highlight is uh, that uh, most of these activities are uh, externally oriented. So science is not um, going on, um, it's not a solid, a solipsistic uh, exercise. Uh, science is made networking with others. For example, at the beginning of this process, we have to search other um, partners uh, to build up consortia with which to uh, do the uh, to, 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 um, write the proposal and obtain funding and then we have to perform uh, experiments with those partners and at the end we have seen that this is the dissemination dissemination process is so important uh, so um, scientists have the uh, the um, interest also to communicate uh, with others because it is important to keep the results in order for science to uh, uh, go further to progress and uh, uh, if uh, the, this dissemination process is so important uh, we can say that the, the uh, publication is one the main components of science. Uh, and in fact, I want to um, highlight on uh, this meaning of publication. What does the word publication mean? Uh, I have collected here uh, the main meanings of the word publication. And uh, um, uh, publication in, uh, in particular, I want to draw your attention to the second and third meaning. The second meaning is the action of making something generally known, and which is, uh, this is what expect from the scientific publication because some scientists that produce the article want that others know what is the result of the experiment. But the third meaning, we have uh, the business uh, meaning, uh, let's say. So for example, there is uh, a book or journal issued for public say. And as an example of this meaning, there is scientific publications. So my question is, why do the scientific work is brought as an example of the business uh, meaning of the word publication. If, the, um, as if scientists are interested in communicating to others their results, uh, why do we have this, uh, this business meaning? Well, uh, we have this meaning uh, because uh, uh, knowledge uh, that is produced by scientists usually is enclosed behind paywalls. And this is one of the uh, main problems of the actual scholarly communication system. Uh, if you want, this is a paper, this is a scientific article. Uh, it is a um, recent 
screenshot that I have, that I have taken to, to this article. And if you want to read this paper, you have to pay, or at least your institution have to pay for you. Uh, and I think, uh, and this is um, a problem because so knowledge is not open to everybody. It's not open, for example, for students like you, or for me working from my home, for example, I have to access and uh, my institution have to pay. Uh, this is a problem also when we have cross-disciplinary uh, researchers, for example, because institutions usually buy um, a subscription uh, for a particular area of interest, of interest for that institution. So uh, if we have uh, um, cross-disciplinary re researchers, we may have the problem to access to them. Uh, well, this is a, an estimate. Um, a research institution every year uh, spend uh, 10 billion dollars on academic journals on scientific publication only only to buy access to scientific publication so there is a huge amount of money uh, going on to just to buy knowledge which is produced by researchers and uh, uh, well uh, the problem is that we have knowledge produced by scientists behind pearls. And um, many of the resources uh, with, that are funding uh, the scientific work come from um, public institutions. So um, uh, they are, uh, these researchers are publicly funded. And also in this sense, science is made uh, by society because it, it is funded by society. Of course, it is a product for society as we have seen in the first slide. Uh, the intention is to produce uh, good results uh, in order to improve the way in which we live in our society. So science is made for society and by society. Uh, and uh, as a colleague was saying before, during the pandemic, we, it, we, it became uh, evident that we really, really, we really need uh, science uh, to overcome this situation, first of all, but also uh, it was evident that um, some scientific concepts like curves, the models became uh, a buzzword and uh, words that we heard every day, or today also, we still hear them in everyday life. And we heard them, um, they are uh, words that are going, uh, which are repeated uh, also uh, um, by non-experts. So um, the situation is um, evident for uh, everyone. Also for non-scientists have to face uh, this concept. And uh, also um, during the pandemic, it became evident the importance of data, the importance of quality data in particular. Uh, public decision-making processes uh, are um, grounded, are based on data. And so we need, we really, really need good quality data uh, in order to produce uh, not only robust results, uh, robust scientific results, but also to help good decision-making processes. Uh, and of good, uh, of course, uh, good data management can improve uh, the quality of data and so the quality of also um, of uh, decisions uh, that are taken on behalf of uh, the general public, on behalf of society and for society. Uh, and uh, in fact, we can see that uh, science, as the rest of the society, I dare to say, has become more and more data driven. So there is a shift from this empirical science, which uh, was uh, basically of observation, and then to a phase where uh, observation led to um, uh, theory uh, generation, uh, and, uh, and then uh, with the capability, computing capability, we had this uh, possibility, uh, we started the possibility to uh, generate models, for example, to elaborate models, to interpret uh, 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 the outside world, the empirical world. And then uh, we have now the uh, possibility to produce large amount of data and scientists usually do collect uh, data 
and have to manage, can uh, mix different data sources and can uh, help, of course, to manage uh, huge quantities of data. Uh, so uh, now that yeah, we have seen, I think uh, I have tried to pass the, main, the motivation of the importance uh, of uh, knowing how science works, um, because we are citizens, I mean, um, uh, I am going just to have a look at the main concepts of uh, scholarly communication. So first of all, uh, we have uh, peer review, uh, the, which is considered one of the pillars of modern science, and it is a sort of quality assurance uh, mechanism. So uh, the um, scientific work of an author, a paper uh, usually um, undergo uh, to the uh, check and control by the rest of the um, uh, scientific community. Uh, so by they, they are checked and controlled by their peers. Uh, it is a check that the, uh, um, uh, the check soundness of the scientific content, in particular on methodology. And then uh, we have preprints. Preprints are the manuscript uh, uh, by the author, it's the author's manuscript, uh, which comes before the peer review process. Mm -hmm. uh, so before undergoing peer review and formal publication, the author uh, has this uh, paper and it is called preprint. Um, in the um, last uh, um, years, they become more and more important because the uh, publication of preprints, for example, on preprint servers has enabled the, um, a, a quicker release uh, um, uh, of scientific uh, knowledge. Uh, but uh, uh, because uh, the peer review process is an important process, uh, it works. It really give, uh, gives um, uh, soundness. It means it can help to improve contents, uh, scientific contents, but it can take uh, uh, also long, long periods uh, to be uh, um, uh, to be uh, finished. So, for example, also a month uh, in some cases. Uh, and uh, um, I think the possibility to uh, uh, to uh, submit the preprints to uh, um, uh, specific repositories uh, have become more uh, and more uh, uh, common practice in science. Uh, and the postprint is when the uh, article uh, already received uh, peer review and the author uh, have. Uh, may have upset, accepted uh, the suggestions and tips and um, checks coming from the reviewers. Uh, so uh, this, the, this final stage of the article, which is read publication is called postprint. Uh, if we have the editorial formatting, uh, it is called the version of record, or it, uh, if um, we refer to the article without the editorial formatting, which is the way in which it appears on the scientific journal for the author's accepted manuscript. Uh, uh, well, uh, after the article is produced, Submitted, peer reviewed, and then finally um, uh, uh, published on a, a scientific journal, there is the dis dissemination. Uh, researchers communicate and uh, are interested in communicating their results to and their findings to uh, the rest of the um, uh, scientific community and possibly also to the rest of the uh, society. Uh, so, um, uh, beyond the scientific papers, there are for example, and uh, uh, repositories and dissemination activity, activities uh, going on. Um, and um, uh, this uh, process of sharing research results is really uh, important also for the rest of the society, because, for example, um, in the or uh, because scientific knowledge uh, can also have effects uh, on, on uh, can uh, enable uh, business processes, for example, the availability of scientific data that can be used for new applications or uh, I don't know uh, the. Mm, 
uh, knowledge produced in healthcare uh, research uh, can produce new drugs and new treatments and so on. Uh, so if the dissemination of scientific contents is so important and uh, also practiced inside the scientific community. Why uh, open is not the default mode. Open um, referred to the availability of um, uh, papers. Uh, so I'm, um, as we have seen at the beginning, uh, we have uh, to pay to access uh, many of the scientific articles um, that which are being produced by also by funded research institutions. Well, uh, this is because scientific journals uh, are sus subscription based and we have this problem um, that the, uh, uh, the research institutions have to pay for the work of researchers for uh, as authors, hmm, for the work of uh, of researchers as reviewers and also uh, have to pay access uh, to the research results. Um, and it, it, it's um, important also to highlight that uh, they are buying access and not, not, uh, um, uh, not always uh, there is a paper issue being bought, uh, but it, it's access. So if our institution um, do not subscribe anymore, maybe we do not have access anymore to the, to the same scientific plans. Uh, and this happens because researchers, uh, uh, when publishing in uh, commercial uh, scientific journals, uh, um, so relinquish their copyright. This means that they give up uh, the commercial rights uh, and uh, uh, they give up all the potential benefits, uh, commercial uh, um, business benefits that could derive from, uh, from the um, publication. And uh, that means that they are not allowed anymore to freely air, distribute and uh, circulate that content that they themselves have produced. Uh, so, um, uh, basically, mm, this is the life of a scientific uh, article, and uh, I prepared this slide uh, to, to uh, highlight, to underline the concept that I have already um, mentioned, uh, that is that the scientific community do the entire work from um, writing from doing the research, writing the article, and then uh, the editorial check and peer review. This is all, uh, all uh, these are all uh, activities that are performed <coughs> by the scientific community. And uh, um, when publishing in the final stage of this uh, publication process, um, uh, researchers uh, um, agree to uh, uh, give up their right they sign uh, the agreement and they transfer copyright to uh, commercial editor and then we have this commercial service going on at just the end of the um, uh, of this uh, process uh, and uh, uh, this ends up enclosing scientific uh, production behind paywalls and uh, uh, if this is the problem uh, of the let's say scholarly communication system, we have also uh, the solution going on already uh, uh, from many years, uh, and it is open science. Open science is a, uh, a solution that uh, we have already, uh, and uh, I am going to show you how uh, open science work and what uh, wants to achieve. Uh, so, open science, uh, we usually say it is an umbrella word uh, and um, many aspects, it's made up of many components. We have, of course, open access, uh, open data, uh, the um, assessment of research, uh, the preparation of specific policies uh, that enable uh, um, to work in an uh, open and transparent uh, um, research ecosystem, let's say, which are being prepared inside research institutions, which can be uh, um, 
uh, prepared in uh, research institutions and open science tools. All those components uh, are uh, important to, in order to achieve this shift uh, in the scholarly communication system. Um, and the important uh, thing is that the objective of open science is uh, to open as much as possible each step of the research uh, activity. So to work with more transparency uh, and to um, uh, um, uh, importance not only to publication but also to other uh, components and elements uh, that can be produced uh, by uh, scientists. Uh, so what is open access? Uh, it's a component of open science. It means that research outputs, uh, articles, but also data sets, software, uh, lab notes, and other um, eventual um, uh, products are available to anyone without uh, barriers. So we, uh, the idea is that anyone uh, also outside the research community can access content without having to pay uh, for subscription as in the traditional scholarly communication system. Uh, Open access means uh, also it, it's a shift also in the um, uh, in in the idea it wants to be uh, to bring openness also to diversity. For example, um, here in the components of open access on the uh, benefit. Uh, open access can bring. I have underlined this uh, openness to researchers in other non-wealthy country, for example. It may be of importance also to uh, uh, give the possibility to others to access uh, knowledge, but uh, uh, not only um, uh, because of cost, but also uh, the importance of recognizing the diversity of knowledge and um, uh, the, the, the possibility to be given to other epistemologies uh, is uh, really important. So open science is, uh, first of all, about collaboration. Uh, the idea is to uh, um, give to scientists tools, practical tools that enable data sharing and uh, sharing of knowledge and the capability of um, the, the practical uh, capability of doing so, but also uh, to understand the importance of uh, collaboration uh, in order to obtain new knowledge. Uh, uh, and uh, um, I think it is also uh, important to underline what are the benefits of open science for society al at large. Uh, first of all, decisions are based on uh, better information, and uh, this is what I was saying at the beginning. Decision makers can have, uh, the, um, avail have the availability of uh, more transparent and um, hopefully uh, robust uh, results. Uh, we have more opportunities for business because the availability of data can bring to new applications. And we have also increased awareness of the scientific method because uh, if uh, scientists uh, are not closed uh, in their uh, ivory tower, but uh, are um, supposed to talk also to the external world, also outside the scientific community, uh, society can understand better uh, how science work and how science can contribute to improve society. And so this brings to an improved scientific literacy. So the knowledge of, and, and the, uh, yes, the general public can have a, a better knowledge of uh, how scientific uh, results are achieved. And uh, uh, also um, another in, uh, part uh, which is uh, usually associated uh, with open science uh, is citizen science. Uh, citizen science is uh, realized through projects and processes in which um, uh, citizens in the sense uh, of uh, non-researchers, 
uh, so uh, um, citizens which are not employed as scientists can be involved in several stages of the scientific pro uh, um, uh, process. Uh, there are many projects uh, going on and uh, citizens and contribute collecting data, for example, observing images or um, uh, with other uh, contributions from the beginning to the end of uh, a project. And um, uh, for example, there are projects um, that can be also that uh, collect the contribution of uh, citizens also to, um, uh, uh, to um, project to project the, the, the experiment to um, build up the, the idea of the research and uh, uh, also um, uh, citizens con can contribute uh, analyzing um, just for example collecting data with their smartphones or uh, funding in crowdfunded funded, uh, projects. Uh, so uh, in fact the, the objective is to give uh, a more um, a close possibility uh, to the uh, to citizens to contribute to uh, research innovation processes. So uh, the idea is to uh, give the opportunity, let's say, to also set up the agenda mm, to contribute to uh, uh, say what is important for citizens. Mm. Uh, so uh, the idea is to give a um, uh, a further opportunity uh, to the uh, to society at large to contribute and to have uh, a relation uh, with science and a scientist. Uh, here I have selected just uh, three uh, examples, but there, there are um, a lot of uh, projects going on. And if you want to, you can have a look at the uh, website that I have uh, pasted. Uh, below. Um, um, and uh, I think that it's maybe of some interest to have a look at them just to uh, understand how they work and uh, um, if you want to, uh, to contribute. Uh, so uh, I have already said that the idea in open science is to give uh, the right relevance only to publication, but also to other elements of the scientific world, uh, work. So for example, also to the production of data set, of uh, software, of new protocols, and so on. And so uh, uh, data, uh, as we have seen, are uh, of great importance uh, in the research life cycle. And this is an estimate, an official estimate of the European Commission of uh, what is going to cost every year, 26 billion dollar, uh, euros, sorry, are being uh, lost only in Europe for not managing data uh, properly. So uh, again, this is a, a huge uh, amount of money, and it is uh, worth mentioning that uh, there are some activities that can be um, uh, that, that, that can be uh, planned in order to manage properly data and uh, ultimately to produce robust scientific results, not to uh, lose data and not to um, create problems with uh, uh, um, not, not properly managing uh, data, research data. So uh, let's have a look at what uh, research data uh, management is. Uh, and uh, I want to start with uh, a collection of uh, um, stories, um, true stories, let's say, uh, to underline, to highlight what can happen if scientists do not manage and share such data uh, in the correct way. So first of all, data can be lost. This is a story from the University of L'Aquila uh, where a researcher published a paper. This paper um, and, uh, was um, published in a scientific journal, but uh, after publication, uh, some of his colleague, uh, colleague um, noticed something strange in the data. So they uh, asked him just to look at the data, the underlying the publication. They asked to see the data and uh, the researcher could not, uh, was not able to 
provide the data that uh, he had used to produce the, to to write that article, and um, at the end he had to retract his paper and he is the this is the um, uh, coverage by uh, nature uh, he had he said that he could not provide data because he had lost during uh, the l'aquila earthquake uh, so it may happen that uh, if we do not manage data properly we can lose them uh, the, this uh, is another story and uh, um, is another paper uh, and uh, here uh, I want to um, uh, uh, highlight this possibility that also data may contain errors also in scientific publication. In this case, it was a, a paper um, uh, um, published by um, uh, <coughs> two professor, Harvard, uh, uh, professors of University of Harvard. And uh, uh, basically this, uh, their idea is that uh, uh, the economic growth slows down dramatically when uh, the size of the debt exceeds 50% uh, of a GDP. And uh, uh, this uh, theory, which was um, exposed uh, data in that paper, was used to uh, support uh, um, public austerity uh, policies uh, during the economic crisis. But the problem is that uh, the publication contained some errors. Data contained some errors. And uh, it was a student. Uh, which uh, find out the errors um, in a um, uh, 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 his professor just asked uh, co uh, collected a set of uh, publication, a set of papers, and asked the students to try to uh, obtain the same results, to replicate the calculation and obtain the same results. In that case, it, it should have been quite easy because uh, he uh, had to um, uh, replicate uh, the calculation with publicly available uh, data, but he could not uh, obtain the same results. So uh, he then tried again, and uh, at the end he uh, wrote an email to the uh, authors uh, of the publication and they sent to him uh, the spreadsheet and simply the spreadsheet contained some um, uh, trivial errors uh, that may happen uh, with person work, uh, you know, it may happen also to uh, make some errors, uh, but trivial errors, uh, uh, I, I think, um, if I don't go wrong, some of the um, uh, cal uh, the calculations did not uh, select all the rows available in the data set, things like that. And uh, uh, the, the idea is that if the sharing of data underlying publication uh, was made before, maybe that error was um, uh, was found before, and that theory was was not used to uh, choose for austerity public policy. So, uh, again, uh, the, in, in this case, uh, the story is of data manipulation, is an end picture uh, from uh, USSR, and uh, that person simply disappeared from the picture. Uh, so, again, the importance of uh, data sharing uh, is that we want to um, um, prevent data or, or errors and uh, um, data manipulation in this case. Uh, uh, and in fact, research integrity uh, is uh, also um, uh, a thing that can be achieved with a more transparent research life cycle. Uh, in this case, we have this uh, story coming from the Netherlands, where a professor uh, had to retract 58, 58 eight uh, scientific articles uh, uh, because uh, uh, after some PhD students uh, found some uh, strange things going on with data, uh, then the university, the Dutch university in which uh, the professor was working in, started an investigation, opened an investigation, and uh, at the end, they, um, um, they, uh, 
uh, thought that the uh, data were entirely made up uh, by the professor. So uh, this uh, story is important because this led uh, to the um, uh, to setting up uh, a, a set of uh, open research. Uh, uh, and open science activities in that uh, institution, in that university, but uh, after that also in the Netherlands at large. And now the Netherlands are one of the pioneering uh, countries uh, in, uh, in the field of open science and uh, also in the field of uh, research data management practices. So they give uh, a lot of um, resources. They allocate a lot of resources in the research data management uh, um, in their institutions. Uh, so the um, availability of data uh, and also data sharing um, by researchers uh, and scientists is important also to try to overcome the reproducibility crisis, um, which is um, uh, the lack uh, the, uh, the, the, the fact that raw data underlying <laughs> publication are going uh, lost. And uh, in that paper, they try to uh, found, find out the, the raw data underlying publications. And they found that um, the more you go back in time and the, the more difficult it is to have the data. And uh, um, at the end, it's quite impossible to uh, uh, to try to replicate um, experiments. Uh, so uh, you, uh, I want to underline here that uh, I am talking about data in its most wide uh, meaning. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, uh, uh, we have data uh, when we have uh, we consider data uh, of facts or observation experiences an argument or a theory is um, uh, constructed is built up or tested so data are uh, uh, referring to data as a, um, information mm, uh, at large and uh, they can be uh, in a variety of forms and format. Uh, so we have, uh, of course, you know, uh, but it is to underline that uh, research data are all, all not only numerical data, but we have uh, data or information in uh, of different types coming with different formats. Uh, beside I can be uh, classified for their content. Also, we have uh, textual data, audiovisual, multimedia, and of course, numerical data uh, format and uh, the um, way in which data are collected. So we have experimental or observational data um, derived or compiled uh, from other sources, uh, so data from simulation and so on. Uh, we can consider data um, on the basis on, of uh, um, the format um, and uh, the, the, their basic nature. So if they are born digital or digitized or uh, non-digital uh, in nature, for example, if we are talking about paper surveys, uh, let's think, for example, on uh, the work of in the humanities sector for sociologists, sociologists, uh, their data are, can be uh, of uh, surveys, interviews, written uh, uh, activity. And uh, they can be primary or uh, of a secondary uh, 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 nature, or they can be raw or uh, processed. Uh, well, in the uh, scholarly communication, uh, uh, the repository is one of the main tools to enable open access. The repository uh, is, or, or the, uh, at least the open access repository is an open archive, uh, a digital platform where all those knowledge uh, can be uh, deposited and uh, can be, um, uh, that, that holds uh, research output and uh, the uh, thing that is that they provide free and immediate and permanent access to research results uh, for anyone to, uh, and anyone is free to use, download, and distribute their contents of open access repositories. Uh, 
uh, and uh, so uh, uh, key components of the repository is uh, the digital object object uh, we uh, refer to digital object object in the scholarly communication system um, as any uh, such result uh, in its digital form, which can be uploaded into uh, a repository uh, and possibly shared. So the digital object deposited in a repository can be articles, but also data sets, softwares, images, and other types of, uh, of data. Uh, we have data which are information about the digital object and the payload, which is the um, uh, the, 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 the uploaded mm, uh, file for the port and baby for sharing. Uh, and um, with the payload, it can, the payload can come together with uh, a readme, for example, the documentation. So metadata is uh, our data describing the information. Uh, we are uh, uh, about the information shared on, uh, deposited on our repository. Uh, and so metadata are really, really important in order to um, facilitate ability of contents because uh, uh, we have uh, huge amounts of con scientific contents, data and knowledge. And uh, it's uh, really important to have uh, also to, to enable to, to facilitate uh, the findings on the, um, of this um, uh, contents and uh, uh, metadata can be added manually or also automatically and uh, there are uh, discipline specific uh, standards uh, uh, and uh, in scholarly communication another important element is uh, persistent identifiers the persistent identifier is a record to, to a document which is long lasting and uh, this document of course can be a file a paper or, or, or other type of research output and um, uh, uh, they also the, the, the persistent identifier usually enables also the um, uh, the reach of the uh, specific content uh, like for example this is done in by the doi uh, the digital object identifier which is a type persistent identifier uh, the doi um, not all it's not only a, a reference uh, to a specific document but it is also resolvable and so usually if you um, uh, if you uh, write it on the uh, on a browser you are brought uh, directly to the resource uh, and um, so but they are uh, really uh, important to uh, for the uh, identification of specific contents. Uh, so uh, the um, research data management, as we have seen, has a lot of benefits um, for science and for society at large. Uh, at large. And also, I uh, should say it can be useful also for undergrad students because, for example, you can use uh, a, th a thesis. The, the work that you will do for your thesis um, may be considered, uh, can be considered uh, a research work. And so you uh, have a look at the simple, really, really simple tips uh, and maybe uh, also describe it in the methodology of your, uh, of the written part of your uh, work. And uh, this may be, uh, it may uh, be of help. Uh, of course, it's important also students to care about the data they are using in their uh, exercises and, um, and works. Um, it's important to manage, we have seen not to lose data, to have a, a more efficient work, uh, because in some cases data can be uh, reproducible and um, because uh, the right management and maybe also sharing the data can enable validation checks and control. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a, a definition of research data management, uh, and I have highlighted the 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 the, the, the words, most important words uh, that uh, you have to pay attention to. Uh, so research data management is the careful handling and organization uh, 
of data during the entire research life cycle. So the, from the beginning to the end, to the, uh, till the sharing and reuse possibly. Uh, and uh, is uh, a set of uh, action uh, to enable efficient uh, work and also the protection of data in the sense of uh, uh, make them secure, sustainable, and uh, possibly reusable. So uh, they are quite, uh, they are becoming uh, known uh, in the scientific uh, activity and the scientific work in the research life cycle. I have selected a few of them, so uh, they are still referred to the research work. I, I um, think that may be of interest also for you as students. Uh, so data are important uh, because they can enable check validation and also uh, other uh, activities uh, as we have already seen and uh, I, uh, our practices that encompass activities uh, from the beginning from the idea to the uh, end of the scientific work so um, uh, Research data management can um, contains aspects of the election. So the fact that of considering uh, data and uh, having a strategy on the data that we are gathering, if they are um, um, collected by ourselves or we are using uh, other other data, uh, and so have a strategy uh, also for. Um, uh, for example, uh, uh, the collection of data hmm, from sensing um, for, uh, that can be derived from interviews, modeling, simulation, and so on. Uh, in the data collection, uh, the, an important uh, aspect to consider is the file format to use uh, with uh, the specific uh, data that we have. Uh, the file depends on the content of the file itself and um, the, the choice of the format uh, depends on, of course on standards it's uh, always good to have a look uh, at if there are discipline specific standards and um, also uh, uh, consider the software uh, the availability of and cost of software uh, and hardware which is uh, going to be used of course um, when the file formats uh, it's um, a good idea to consider the risks uh, formats um, uh, for example, can be uh, can become obsolescent or uh, they can become hard to uh, convert, for example, with proprietary uh, file formats and so on. So uh, they can be considered best good practices, let's say, to use open documented standard, uh, to uh, use um, common research community standards and include also readme file uh, when using, when choosing to use proprietary formats. Uh, also a good strategy is to think of uh, file naming. In particular, it is important when working with others and uh, uh, is to have a common strategy, so to have a, a, a look to what others uh, in the research group are uh, interested um, in, and maybe we can consider using the, for example, uh, the content description, the date, the location, the version, and so on. Uh, it's important um, to have this common strategy because uh, in many um, projects there are huge consortia so a, a, a variety of partners a lot of partners research institution uh, we, which are working together so maybe um, person uh, different in different countries have to access the same data and maybe uh, the same files so it can be of some importance to have a look at those um, uh, uh, of this uh, techniques mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is uh, an, an example of what is wrong a wrong uh, practice and it is really common about uh, for example file uh, uh, managed for uh, during the writing for example of, uh, of a thesis of uh, data analysis for a thesis and um, uh, this is an example 
or there are different techniques. Uh, what the, in the previous slides I have uh, collected some of the tips uh, which have been elaborated uh, in such communities just to consider what are the um, aspects that you may be uh, may consider in choosing the uh, way in you encode the, uh, the, the the name of the uh, of the files. This is an example, uh, but uh, I think it's. Um, a good example and it can be a good strategy when working with other uh, with um, colleagues and other um, uh, research partners uh, the second uh, 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 the second thing is the folder structure uh, so where the information uh, on a topic is located and uh, also in this case uh, the uh, tip is to uh, have a common strategy. So uh, I was, uh, um, I think to it before and share uh, the decision with uh, colleagues and uh, uh, with uh, other, uh, colleagues, students or researchers. Um, the, usually it is used this uh, hierarchical structure and uh, also separating ongoing uh, from completed uh, work is uh, can be a right uh, strategy and uh, of course uh, uh, backup is really really important uh, so uh, to have a strategy of uh, for um, um, backupping um, every so and so the, the, the data. The folder uh, here's an example of uh, for the folder structure. Uh, and uh, again, uh, they are only ideas. Um, I think uh, they may be used or not. You have to, it's up to you to choose. But the tip is to have an, uh, an, an idea, to have a strategy to think before, not to be um, driven by chance, for example. Documentation is really important in um, when. Um, uh, performing research. Uh, it can be produced at a study level. So while collecting information, for example, it may be of uh, great importance to have contextual information. Uh, we um, can uh, also uh, document uh, methodological information, proced procedures, and so on. And then we have data label documentation, uh, which, are, which is um, information. Uh, about the data set uh, or the variables that which have been created, uh, derived data, aggregated data, and so on. This is important because maybe um, working on uh, um, uh, uh, now uh, it, it seems evident that that variable means that, uh, but maybe later, uh, some months later, I may be not uh, uh, able anymore to uh, remember what I uh, have created with that variable. Uh, so this is a, a typical example of documentation is uh, readme file. Uh, and also in research data management is important to have a look and consider legal and ethical uh, in some cases, in fact, we have uh, um, sensitive data, and it is uh, important when, for example, collecting data for research, it's important to um, uh, consider if uh, we have to ask for uh, informed consensus and uh, with the, 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 um, the person, for example, that I am interviewing. Uh, it, it's uh, also good to have uh, to think of the protection of personal data. Uh, if I have a, a strategy uh, on how to protect personal data and also uh, on the lenses uh, with which I will release uh, eventually my data. So uh, these are uh, data that are uh, have to be handled with greater care. So personal data, of course, personal sensitive data, for example, uh, information that can reveal uh, racial or ethnic origins, um, political uh, views, religion, and so on. And uh, also pay attention if you are um, <clears throat> and uh, data protected by intellectual property uh, rights agreements or if they are confidential uh, data. 
Uh, as I said, story and jet backup uh, is really important. So this, uh, the tip is to have a strategy and uh, consider uh, a periodical um, uh, backup uh, because, uh, of course, you know it's important to uh, for for data to be safe and uh, also to consider. Uh, how uh, this uh, backup will, will be performed. Uh, um, okay, uh, another important thing is that uh, Google services are really widespread, widespread uh, and it's, they are really useful, but it's important to know that uh, using uh, services means usually uh, agreeing on terms of use and in the case of Google we are giving everything to Google and we have to know that maybe uh, tomorrow we if the um, terms will be changed maybe we will have uh, problems accessing our data so uh, it's uh, it's not a problem of course using services but uh, be uh, be aware of what does this mean and uh, uh, of course you can consider using other uh, resources may, may be provided by your uh, university and um, data sharing is uh, uh, another important aspect of uh, research data management uh, this is uh, really important to um, uh, enable the possibility for others to uh, reuse the, to see what have uh, we have produced and also to reuse and so produce new uh, outputs starting from uh, what we have done. Uh, in order to enable data sharing, it is important to um, uh, give information to the access, so determining um, uh, how we make data available uh, and uh, what, what type of access we provide and with which uh, conditions. Um, uh, in order to enable data sharing, uh, it's important to use a persistent identifier and to give also information on licenses, so on the conditions uh, with, which, uh, with which we release uh, our data and uh, we, the possibility that we give to others to uh, use or reuse uh, our uh, data preservation is made with repositories and means keeping data available and possibly usable for longer term. So the dif difference between uh, backup and, um, and the deposit in a repository is that the repository um, gives the persistent identifier and is um, uh, um, made to uh, pursue th this long term preservation. Mm -hmm. Uh, as for uh, software sharing, uh, uh, for example, a uh, good pra practice could be uh, to use uh, GitHub in, a, uh, in connection with Zenodo, which is a uh, general purpose repository. Uh, in this uh, Zenodo enables to, the, the, to associate the repository with a persistent identifier and uh, uh, so it enables the uh, reference mm, in the repository uh, in the academic literature. Uh, okay, this is the very last part of the presentation and they are the FAIR principles. Uh, the FAIR principles are a part of the uh, um, management of data uh, are related to data uh, and it's a, an acronym and uh, uh, FAIR it stands for findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. So uh, findable uh, data uh, have to be discovered, of course, accessible to make who and when can access the data. Interoperable uh, means that data can be integrated with other data and they can be easily uh, used and uh, read by managed by machine also reusable uh, means that data can be reused by all others in your research uh, they are principle and not standard and they they were um, designed by the group of experts between uh, 2014 and 16, they are 15 principles, and uh, we are going to uh, just to have a quick look of uh, what are the uh, verification 
physics. Uh, some of them uh, we have already have uh, a look at them uh, while talking about uh, research data management. Uh, but, uh, again, uh, in order to uh, make data fair, it, it's important to produce the, uh, good documentation that gives context uh, and uh, make data understandable by others. So it's uh, important to produce also to associate good metadata. metadata. Uh, and uh, uh, choose the right data formats in order to make data simple to combine with other uh, data and uh, in order to be machine readable. Uh, access to data means that uh, um, the researcher have to decide who will have access to the data and how. Uh, give persistent identifier allows out for example to find and cite so to give credit uh, to the data and licenses uh, are used to tell others how they can they can uh, reuse data so um, the f of fair is findable uh, and it is the first step when using and reusing data so it is in metadata are uh, important to um, uh, make easy to uh, for others to find uh, data both for humans and computers and uh, uh, machine readable metadata are essential for automatic discovery of data set and services uh, so this is a really essential component of uh, for the, 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 this process uh, to make fair uh, accessible uh, once the user finds the required data uh, he or she needs to know how uh, they can be accessed uh, and um, it is important to underline that uh, this accessibility is not open uh, it's not the same uh, thing as open uh, because also, uh, for example, uh, sensitive, sensible, sensitive data can, or personal data can be uh, made fair. Uh, accessible here means not open, but the possibility for the scientific community to know through metadata the, uh, that the existence of this content. So it's a, a little uh, different from open. Of course, the uh, idea is to produce open uh, contents, but in some cases, as we have seen uh, for some particular kind of data, it is not too possible to have all the data open. Uh, here is just uh, um, uh, 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 recap of the type of repositories that are available. Uh, repository can be uh, divided in the, uh, the, uh, the uh, institution. So who uh, curate or uh, deposit in the repository. And so we have the thematic or disciplinary repositories. We have institutional uh, or national repositories. And on the other hand, uh, we have uh, repository um, on the basis of what can be deposited in them. So we have literature repositories, which are intended for our book reports and so on. Data repositories so, uh, designed to um, uh, the data and uh, catch-all repositories like, for example, Zinodo. Uh, well, all research products can be uh, deposited. Uh, interoperable means that uh, data usually uh, need to be integrated with other data. And uh, um, in addition, data needs to operate with applications, workflows, our analysis, storage, and processes. So uh, again, uh, also in this case, it is good to have a look if the uh, um, uh, best practices uh, in the um, community uh, of uh, reference. Uh, this is, for example, uh, what um, uh, interoperable means uh, in Zenodo. For example, we can uh, relate a content to another um, content, uh, entering the related identifier and we can specify which is the relation with the content we are uploading on the other content. And, uh, so they can uh, link together, can be linked together. Reusable uh, is uh, uh, the last 
part of the principle, the last um, word. Uh, and uh, in, in fact, the ultimate goal of PER is to um, enable and uh, uh, optimize the reuse of data. So to achieve reusability, metadata and data should be well described uh, so that they can be uh, replicated or combined in different setting, settings. And again, it is important to specify licenses uh, in order to uh, clear information to others on how they can, if and how they can reuse your data, and also uh, specify the provenance. Uh, well, uh, this is the end of my presentation. If I, I don't know if you have questions, maybe I am happy to answer, or me and your professor happy to answer if you want. That's what we uh, of course. At the beginning, uh, you talk about uh, also uh, errors and uh, bad results mm -hmm. in uh, our research. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't understand uh, how we do share our research when we don't uh, arrive to the conclusion that we expected. Oh. And we can uh, publish it uh, as a good work. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, and also uh, negative results. Uh, so, for example, if uh, you have an hypothesis and you cannot prove it, maybe of some importance. In the traditional scholarly communication system, uh, usually the, um, in, in order for the article to be accept, accepted, uh, is um, better to have uh, positive results. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea with open science is to give important evidence also to these uh, negative results, because um, the idea is that they are not bad per se. They can also be useful to the scientific community, for example, uh, in not repeating the same experiment or maybe testing it in a different way, using a different methodology. So, for example, the difference between a scientific journal and some um, uh, um, uh, some uh, uh, like the uh, Open Research Europe, which is a publishing platform, so not a scientific journal, but a scientific publishing platform, is that you can upload also negative results because uh, they are not, uh, uh, they can be useful for others. Uh, and again, uh, the, the errors that I uh, showed you is to underline the importance to share data and to manage them properly in order not to lose them, not to, in order also to enable checks and controls and validation uh, and so accountability um, uh, by the research community and by um, society, why not at large? This is my idea. And uh, so it's a very good question. Uh, we really need to know that. And then uh, my particular example is that uh, say that there is a promising uh, kind of chemicals in France that could be used for chili cancers. And uh, that in theory, that, that we are testing that. And uh, after years and years of experiments, you and your team uh, end up showing, like proving that it, it can work, just like it's being wasted time. Because uh, it's not like you've got you screwed up and you you into wrong conclusions or it's just the results which are sound uh, are incomplete that they don't validate the accuracy path which was true. But from that, then it becomes public and other people that could work the same thing could save time rather than spending resources on that. Which is something that's more complicated. So it's a negative result, like, and nonetheless, it's important because you can save time. So that's it. Yeah, thank you. We never win the public rights issue when, 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 when you prove that something doesn't work, but it's still important for the session. Thank you. Uh, thank you.
Are there further questions? No? Okay. So maybe today we finish a bit before. Uh, just five minutes. Yesterday we finished 20 minutes later. So on average, we are fine. What? Yeah, okay. Well, you never know, but on average, we are good. So, uh, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow with Andrea. And I will wait more on the I'm working on the work as well. And when it's possible, I'd like to come with research. And that's only research, but business for her. Companies that invest money in that. So, which I can apply. Yep. On uh, organization.